Hey guys. Hey, what's up divas and devos? It's your girl, Nikki. That's right, people. So I promised you in my previous video that I would follow up with a Q&A regarding ACX and audiobook narration. So that's what I'm doing today. So I'm just going to jump right into this video. I'm not going to hold you long today. I'm going to answer all of the questions that were posed to me in the previous video. And if you like this content, please do not hesitate to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. So the first question or one of the first questions that I got was, do I use audacity so if you're not familiar audacity is a recording program so if you're recording um any kind of music or if you're recording an audiobook you can use audacity and it's a free platform where you can do that or should i say a free download and yes i use audacity so for those people that followed me from the beginning of my audiobook narration journey you may know that in a in the first book I was using Final Cut Pro and I'm like, this is not working out too good because I'm more familiar with Final Cut Pro because I do my videos with it. So I was like, okay, well I'll just turn it into an MP3 from there. But it was actually much better to use Audacity. I moved over to Audacity during my second audiobook, which was um, billion Dollar Baddie, the first one. And for those of you that haven't seen the previous video, I am on my third audiobook and I did one audition and I got three contracts for audiobooks. So Billion Dollar Baddie Part 2 is going to be coming out very soon. But yeah, I do use Audacity. And that question, I should have said who posed that question, and it was Bo Thornton. So thank you, Bo, for submitting that question. And yes, Audacity is a great, great way to record your audio. It was actually much easier to record on Audacity versus Final Cut Pro. So I highly suggest it if you're going to get into audiobook narration. The next one is, what is mastering? This is a question by Destiny Diamond. So she's asking, what is mask mastering? And she says, they always say you have to record, edit, and master your audiobook submission, but what is master? So mastering is the finished product, is preparing the finished product. So it is making sure your sound levels are okay. It's like basically wrapping that sound up with a big red bow. <laughs> it's the sound levels. And with ACX, like I've said in previous videos, they are very, very particular about the sound. So the decibels can't be above a certain level and they can't be below a certain level. Your room noise has to be at a certain level and it can't just be dead silence in the background. So some people will try to filter out noise and just mute certain parts of their audio because if you have loud neighbors like I do, then you may have some background noise that you have to contend with. So that's why I will always mostly do my recording like when people are at work or overnight so that I'm not really getting disturbed. So yeah, mastering is just that finished product and it's just getting it ready so that when listeners are listening to your audiobook, it is making sure that it sounds great for them. So yeah, that's what mastering is. And um, so yeah, Destiny, thank you for that question. Um, let's move on to the next one. All right, so... Um, Bo, Bo again, Bo Thornton. So he's asking any technical tips as far as submitting to ACX guidelines. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, it is very, very technical. And I'm still learning stuff. Just like I said, I've done two other audiobooks, And on my third one, I'm still learning. So don't pressure yourself when it comes to it like don't be really hard on yourself because it is difficult because like I said the ACX requirements are kind of outlandish if you ask me but um but yeah so some of technical tips that I do have is more along the lines of consistency so it is for me I had to make sure that I got that consistent sound 
by doing the same way for each recording session. So basically what I mean by that is doing the same thing is making sure that my microphone is the same distance that it was the last time I sat down to record or an issue that I had was with um, with Audacity. If my microphone got unplugged and then I plugged it back in, then my settings were all wacky. So I would have to go in and make sure that my sound was at the same level because I made that mistake previously where I didn't notice that it happened. It had changed my volume to a different level than what I had previously recorded. And yeah, it just threw things off for me and I ended up having to re-record some stuff. So I would say, make sure you check your sound make sure your levels are consistent throughout your book and also it's kind of obvious but it's kind of not obvious because a lot of people don't do it is to actually read through those guidelines on ACX and I know a lot of people will ask me really technical questions and it's really hard to to respond in just a you know in just commentary you know so um, I actually do have some things coming down the pipe for you all that need like real, real guidance when it comes to meeting those ACX criteria, those those sound guidelines. So trust me, I got your back when it comes to it. But also one way to understand is to actually read through those guidelines, try to understand it, like actually look at it on your own and see what it is that you need to do. And also it's really cool because they have forums as well. ACX, if you go on ACX.com, I know a lot of people will watch my videos and then not go over to ACX and look at it themselves. And I'm not saying Bo did this or anything, but I'm just saying um, a lot of people won't check out the websites and not just ACX, but like websites that I suggest. And instead of, you know, just looking at it for themselves or, you know, just actually seeing the visual of it and which could possibly help them understand, they'll come to me and they will ask me like, well, how do you do this? And, you know, stuff like that. So I highly suggest that you read through those ACX guidelines because the best way to understand it is to see it for yourself. But also they do have Q&As and they do have forums as well on the ACX website. So if you ever get confused about stuff, that's where I ended up going a lot of times. And like I said, I do have things coming for you all so that you can easier understand it. I'll try to put things in more of layman's terms for you because trust me, it can get confusing. So even if you are doing, doing the research, you may still get confused. So I, I do plan on helping you out with that. But yeah, those are my suggestions to make sure things are consistent. So yeah, so Bo, Yes, that that is my main technical tip is to make sure that everything is even. Make sure that your mic and everything is the same distance every time that you're recording in the same type of room or the same exact room every time. So don't try to change your atmosphere because one room may have more of an echo and another room may have, you know, more of, you know, a, a better sound quality. So you definitely want that consistency because when you're mastering, it'll be easier because this clip will sound like that clip. So yeah, I highly suggest keep that consistency. So the next thing is... Thank you. Okay, okay, enough, enough. I have a co-producer in the room. Come over and say hello. My daughter is doing the production, and so she is deciding to play with the sound effects in my ear. <laughs> so she's over here doing applause and all kinds of stuff. So I am not particularly putting this in there I'm not sure I was actually doing a podcast for something else and I decided to record here so yes darling please go thank you thank you thank you very much okay so, <laughs> <laughs> so the other question that I got is from Letitia Price and Letitia is asking uh, are headphones necessary to do voiceover narration and uh, I'm not going to say they're like like required or anything, but they're I would say they are definitely necessary because just like right here, I'm trying to hear myself because I'm in a podcast room. I don't know what my sound is going to come through like the headphones 
definitely help with that. You want to know if you're really loud. <laughs> you want to know if you're too low. You won't know that if you don't have headphones on. So invest in headphones, sweetie. I'm telling you, invest in those headphones. Headphones can be quite affordable. And I'm telling you, you will probably sound crazy because you won't realize that, okay, I'm way up on this microphone right now. Or you know what? There's times when I would record and I didn't even realize that my neighbor's dog was barking until I heard it through my headphones. So for me, having the sound on the headphones up helps amplify some of the background noise as well so that I can basically eliminate it or avoid it and wait until my, my neighbor's dog stops barking before before I continue on. So I highly suggest that Yes, you get headphones and I mean, you can try to wing it without them, but I highly, highly, highly suggest that you don't do that. Okay. There's another question here. I'm, I almost missed her. Melanie Roof is asking, can you just do audio narration and not the producing part? How much technical editing work do you have to do in, in just being a narrator? Also, for someone who wants to audition for the first time, can I use my computer? Is it okay for the first audition? Or should I buy and learn how to use equipment before I even audition? Now, that is a loaded question, Melanie. Let's break this down one at a time. So can you just do audio narration and not the producing part? Most people that hire you on ACX are going to want you to produce the book. They're not just going to want your voice. They want you to produce that book. So... There, there are some people that may want less, but they want the full shebang from what I've experienced. So expect to produce if you are going to do audiobook narration. And it says, how much technical editing work do you have to do in just being a narrator? And I'm going to tell you, I did a lot. The answer to that will lie on how well you read because there and like, I don't want it to sound really bad. Like, not like how well you read, like, you know, like you may be illiterate type of thing. I just mean like um, some people may have a better flow or some people may be able to go longer periods of time and read without making a mistake, without stuttering or without having to cough or sneeze, you know. So all of those things are factors in how much editing that you're going to have to do. And I know with my books, I had to take breaks because my final product was a, for each of my books was around five hours. So, yeah, you're not going to be sitting there for that whole time and doing that because in that time, that's not including the editing that I had to do. So just to give you a time frame, I know for me to do a chapter, I expected to put in about an hour of work. OK, so, yeah, I would what I did was I would do my editing basically as I went. And so I would, you know, if I made a mistake, I would stop it. Now, some people prefer to just go through and if they made a mistake, then they'll do something like boop, like make a loud like beep or something so that they can see it on the sound waves. And they'll, it'll show a higher wave so they know, OK, this is where I had messed up and then I can cut that out and go back and do all that. But for me, it was just easier for me to just do my editing as I went. If I made a mistake, I just paused it and then I, you know, redid what I wanted to do. Or if my voice started getting tired or if I sounded boring on one part and I'm like, oh, I didn't like the way that sounded. I would just go back and, and re-record it at that point. So, um, yeah, so I highly, I'm telling you right now, yeah, there's going to be a lot of editing to do. Um, and for someone that wants to audition for the first time, can I use my computer? Is it okay for the first audition? Um, okay, so for me, I actually did my first audition on my computer. And I'm going to tell you right now, it sounded horrible. And I got really, really lucky because the author, she really liked my voice. So she was willing to overlook that horrible sound quality. But before... I went into recording the actual audiobook. I did a little bit of upgrading on my equipment. I didn't have like I didn't put in like a bunch of money to to upgrade, but I did upgrade something. So, you know, I got a better microphone and um I'm trying to think I don't think I had that 
I, well, I may have had that that box, the phone box that cuts down on the echo. I may have had that. But um, but as I went along with each book, I actually upgraded more. So um, I, I built up to these headphones. The headphones that I had previously were about $50 headphones. These are like $100 headphones. So each time that I went along, I did upgrade my equipment. But I'm telling you, if you want the best shot at nailing the audition at getting an author to notice you to notice your audition then try to even if you have to borrow somebody's equipment um just try to have some good equipment available okay so um if you all are not familiar i do have an amazon page so i have a storefront i'm an amazon influencer so you can go on my storefront i'm going to link it down below and in there i wish i actually do have listed all of the equipment that i use as well as some equipment that i suggest so yeah i highly suggest that you check out my amazon page and just check out that equipment speak vision speak asked can i use poetry videos as a sample of my voice for acx um, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to do that, you know, especially if you're going to audition for a poetry book. I mean, why not? Now, here's the thing um, for the samples. That's not a requirement, though, because I, I to this day, I still don't have a sample up on my ACX account. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's you know, that'll be up to you. You know, you, you want to try to show your best work. You're trying to prove to that author that you have what it takes to get an audiobook. So if they didn't have an audition available for you and they were just looking through the profiles, then you may stand out uh, from your poetry, especially if that person has a poetry book or if they like poetry. So, yeah. Um, all right. So let's see. Da, da, da. All right. I think that is it. Yes. Okay. So I answered every single question. I'm just making sure, but yes, I did. I answered every single question. Um, and if you like this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. And also please don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications and set them to all. And I'm ready to peace out on this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye y'all. Yeah.